Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 16 of this series, Learning C++ by Making Games. This is the first video in the new section where we will work on Hangman. Therefore, in this video, we will start by setting up our new project and doing the pseudocode for our game. This video has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Nemian Games. However, before we get into our project proper, there is a quick announcement I need to make. So, back in video 11, I kept talking about something called rational and logical operators. Now, I have no idea what a rational operator is, because that's not the term. As a audience member was kind enough to point out to me, something slipped past in our editing process here, and in my recording process, and in the writing process. Actually, not so much in the recording process, because the way this works is, I write out what I'm going to say, I make the typo, I read what I'm going to say, and I run with that typo all the way through. Usually it's caught at the editing process and I re-record that portion. However, that didn't happen in this case. And I said that I would you know, say in a video that, hey, I had made this mistake. It was missed in the editing process and that we will address it. Now, when I posted video 11 up, I had already recorded through video 15. So the finishing of our number guesser. And since this is the first video I hadn't posted, this is the first video I could go back and make that correction in. So that said, let's make that correction. It's relational and logical operators. All right, that said, let's start a new project and get started on the pseudocode for our Hangman game. All right, so with Visual Studio Open, we're going to create a new project, just like we did previously. And this new project, we're going to use the same setup as we did before, which is our console app in C++. So if you find console app in here, we have console application, and we have C++. Let's hit next. And I'm going to put this in a folder that I've called Hangman, and I'm going to name this Hangman Tutorial. RYT for YouTube recording or recording it for YouTube and hit create. Once this is loaded, we'll just get started on our pseudocode. All right, so let's just get rid of all of this and very quickly let's do one thing and put in our return zero here and let's do our pseudocode. So this will be the I don't know why I put an asterisk there. Sorry about that. I've been working in a language where comments are done by asterisks recently pseudocode for hangman iteration one. So what I want you to do is I want you to try to do the pseudocode yourself first. And it's gonna have four parts. It's gonna have a start screen, a set of variables used in the game, and a way to get a random word, and then the guess and result. Now, before you try this, there is a type of variable we haven't talked about, and I will be going over this variable type in two videos. However, just know that you can talk about having a list of variables for now. And I'll go into much more detail about what I mean by that. Um, and what a list of variables is, is it's going to just be one type, so say integer, of a list of integers or a list of words, for example. So remember words are strings. You don't need to get the syntax in the pseudocode right for that. Just have a, a thing that says a list of variables. That said, if you don't want to try to just pseudocode this stuff, you just want to follow along, or you want to check your pseudocode against mine, I'm going to do it in a minute. I'm just going to pause the video here and let you take an attempt. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is the start screen. I'm just going to do it in between the lines here. And to do the start screen, the first thing I actually need to do is declare a variable. Now, there are other ways to do this. And in fact, we will change this later on to be a more streamlined way. But this is just the way we're going to start based on what we've already done in this series. So we're going to declare a character named start key. I'm not going to put it in quotes, just start key. And then we're going to display hangman display by, in my case, two neurons. And then we're going to display an ASCII image of the lost game state so the picture of a person of a hangman and then we are going to display 
press any key and enter to start. And we're gonna get start key. So that's our start screen. Now, we need to declare a list of variables used in the game. And we have a few variables we need to have. We have to have a number of tries a person's gonna have. We're gonna have to get their guess. We need to know if their guess is correct or not. We need a list of, actually we don't need, but it'd be useful to have a list of previous guesses. And then we need a word and a list of words to pull from. So the way we're gonna do this is we're going to declare an integer called tries and set this, or set to six. The reason we're setting this to six is you have six tries. You have the head, the torso, left arm, right arm, left leg, right leg. Then we're gonna declare a character guess, and we're not gonna initialize this to anything, but this will be the guess, and we'll overwrite this every time the player guesses. We will declare a Boolean value called correct guess and set to false. And then we will declare a list of characters, or a list yeah, of characters, and this will be previous guesses. And we will set the length we are going to do a whole bunch of things to previous guesses, and I'm going to not go through all the pseudocode for that right now. I am just going to say that we want to display the previous guesses as dashes. So we're gonna uh, set, we're gonna loop through the previous guesses. So loop the length of previous guesses, and we're gonna set the value to a dash mark. And we have things that we need to do here, so more to go here. And we have a little bit more to do for this to work down here, so more to go here. The reason I'm not covering this in the pseudocode is there are things that you would not know how to do based on the previous tutorials to know how to pseudocode this. But you should know about your loops already. Now, you might be curious, why are we setting this to dashes? And this is about playability. This isn't about anything special. This is about playability. This isn't about the actual list of characters. We wanna show the person what their guess is, if it's incorrect guess in particular, and how many remaining guesses they have left. Left. And this is just one way to do it. All right, now that we're taking care of previous guesses, what we're gonna do is we're gonna declare a string called word. And this means that we need a string header. And more detail about the string header is in the description below. We need to declare a list of strings called word list and set the length to 99, which again represents 100 words in total. All right, so that takes us through the second part. We're setting our variables for this game. Now for the third part, we need a way to get a random word. So again, there are gonna be things in here that you won't know how to do, so I'm not gonna do the pseudocode for those parts just yet. We'll add those in as we learn about them. But we already know about how to do random numbers. So we know about seeds, we know about the rand function. So we need to use those. So we need to set random seed and this also means need appropriate header hope i had the letters in the right order for that and then we are going to get a list of words and this is the part i'm not going to fully pseudocode because this we haven't talked about yet we'll talk about this in a couple of videos so we will expand this later on and then we are going to loop for a hundred Iteration, so we're gonna just have a piece of code that runs a hundred times and we are going to get from list of words and I'm just gonna say the list of words will actually be called random words So I'm just gonna call this random words now so we'll get from random words and add to word list. So we're gonna have to get a bunch of words from somewhere. We're gonna add them to a list, the variable we declared earlier. We are then going to get a random number. So we're gonna declare random number and initialize it as a rand number using the rand function, zero to 99. So now that we have a random number, what we're going to do is we are going to set word as equal to item at random number 
scrum word list. So we read something into our word list. So we had these random words, they get added to our word list. We then get a random number. We use this random number to find a word in this list and we set the word that we're trying to guess to that random word. And now we have the word we need to guess. So now that we have our random word, we wanna show the player how many letters they need to guess. We could do a loop, but there's problems with that. We don't know how long the word's going to be. We don't know how many asterisks we need. So what we actually have is a string command we can use to do this. So what we're going to do is we're gonna create a new variable called mystery word. And we're gonna set this to the length of word and the value of each item or each character to an asterisk. And that's actually just one line of code, so it isn't as complex as it sounds. So that takes us through the second and third steps now, and first step as well. We now have our mystery word. We have our word and we have a display of asterisk for the length of that word. So now we have the game while the player is guessing pretty much. So the player is going to guess here. And so we have a while loop. So while the player still has tries, or in other words, while tries is greater than or equal to zero. And again, remember the, the last try is actually the zero try. You're just going to do a nice little reset up here. Even though we've already declared one of our values as something, we're going to redeclare it as that. And this is just to make sure the code works correctly. So we're going to reset our correct guess to false because at some point they're going to guess true and we just want to reset this to false each time. So what we're going to do is we're going to display information to player. And we are going to display the image of the gallows stroke man mystery word and tries left. You can display other things as well. You might want to actually write out how many letters are in the word instead of just using mystery word, but this is all we're going to do. So we have a conditional statement that's going to be nested in this loop, which will be if the first value of previous guess, or previous guesses, just want to double check what I called it earlier, previous guesses, is null, so there's nothing there. We are going to display nothing related to previous guesses. So the very first time they start the game up, we don't want there to be, you previously guessed, blah, 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 blah. Else if the first value is valid. So in other words, they have made a guess. We want to display their previous guess. So display, you have guessed the following letters. And we're actually gonna give it a little bit more information. You have guessed, actually you have incorrectly guessed the following letters. And then we are going to display the previous guesses. So now that we have that, what we need to do is we're gonna fall out of this if statement here, this conditional uh, set of statements, and we're gonna display a command. Display guess a letter and press enter. And now we have a variable we heard earlier called guess, and we're gonna get guess. So we wanna get the guess. And now what we need to do is we need to check, does this letter show up at any point in our word. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a for loop. So for the length of mystery word, check does the word, the actual word, have guess in it. If it does, set mystery word at that point to display guess. So what this line is saying is remove that asterisk or that star we put in earlier and put in the guess. And if it does, set correct guess to true. So this line here is why we reset it to false up here. We have another check we're gonna do at this point. So all we're doing here is making sure the guess is actually a correct word 
or a correct letter in the word. Everything else, if it isn't, we'll take care of as we go through. So let's assume, however, for a moment that this is correct. If they've correctly finished guessing the word, so if the puzzle is solved, which is to say mystery word is equal to word, which is entirely possible. Remember, we're changing out the letters in mystery word, the asterisk, the actual words. So if these two things are now equal, mystery word and word, then we're gonna display, congratulations, you've got the word. And then we are going to end this while loop. And that's actually called uh, breaking. So we'll talk about breaks later on. And then we're gonna do an else if correct guess is false. So in other words, if this isn't true, if they don't have anything valid in there, we are going to decrement. So we're going to remove one decrement tries. We're going to display, sorry, guess is not a, actually we're going to have an extra quote in here, but I'm going to just give you a hint about something. There won't be that extra space. Is not a part of the word. So now we've lowered their try. So if we're thinking about it in our loop here for a minute, this number up here has gotten smaller and also that should be a capital T. And then we have our else if correct guess is true. Display congratulations. And then we're gonna have guess is part of the word. And I'm, I'm adding quotes around guess, but to do so, we actually are going to need to have a, a potential symbol there. Um, it depends on what sort of quotes I decide to use. If I use double quotes, you definitely will need a symbol, the slash, to make it work. Actually, I'm using the wrong slash. Sorry about that. I was not thinking as I wrote this. It's gonna be that slash to get this to work correctly. All right, so then what we're gonna have is something I talked about in the previous section, but we haven't used yet, which is a switch. And a switch is just like a bunch of conditional statements nested together. We're gonna switch on the variable called tries. So based on that integer, we're gonna have different displays. So display the ASCII drawing based on the number of tries remaining. So I just realized I have I'm missing an I, have I done ASCII? Did I do that in the earlier one? I did. Okay, sorry about that. So we now have the picture of the hangman and each time we decrement tries, we will add another body part. And the other thing we need to do, is we actually need to set our previous guess to be incremented as well. So we are going to do if correct guess is false, set the next value in previous guess, or previous guesses to guess. So that each time we guess and guess incorrectly, we are going to add our guess to a list, but we aren't gonna override the letter in the list. We're just gonna add it onto the next to the next open spot. And that is the entire game actually. So it's not that hard to do. It is a bit confusing to think about some of this slightly backwards as you might've noticed, like resetting the false here but this is doable. All right, and just to make sure I remember that return zero we've already added, we're gonna put my end in. So that is all we have to do. All right, that said, in the next video, we're gonna take care of our start screen at the very least. And then after that, we're gonna explore loops in more detail, the list of variables, which are arrays and vectors. We're gonna talk about reading in data, and then we'll code in our getting our random word. So we'll actually do this bit in the next section. In the next video, we'll take care of this bit. That said, if you've liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out. And if you want to make sure you're here when all the other videos come out, hit that subscribe and notify icon so you know when those videos are released. And if you wanna help this channel out further, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. That said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial and I hope that you have a wonderful day.